Boom. Oh, I didn't show you where I was today. My bad. <laughs> That's how we do it. Teach from the beach. All right, any homework questions before we take notes? Sorry, you were breaking up there. I couldn't hear it. I have a question on the homework test today. Uh, the one for today? Yeah, I have a problem. So on section P3? It's number 41. Number 41. So mm -hmm. I believe that's P3 for today, right? So let me, I'll tell you what, let's go through the notes and then we'll do 41. Mm -hmm. Sounds good? Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Ms. Garcia, can you hear me? Uh, I can barely hear you. Uh, I think she's saying that she has a question on the homework that's due today. On the one due today? So from P1? Yeah. P1, number 41. Okay. So let's do that. Let's go here. All right. You see the whiteboard there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's do 41 from P1, which says find the additive inverse. And we have 6 minus pi. So another way of saying additive inverse is kind of saying the opposite, right? So if I have the number 4, what's the additive inverse or opposite of 4? Um, negative 4. Negative 4, good. Because the additive inverse says when we add these, we get to the identity or zero, right? So then the question becomes six minus pi. Notice we took the four and just put a negative sign in front. So we would just take this and put a negative sign in front. So again, when we add these, we would get zero because six minus pi plus the negative of six minus pi should be zero. So if you distribute the negative, you get negative six plus pi, or you could write it as pi minus six. And you see if you add these together, you get zero, right? Six minus six will get you zero, negative pi plus pi will get you zero. So you could have wrote it this way, or you could have wrote it this way. Does that answer your question there? Yes. All right, very good. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from P1 or P2?
right. And here we go. You want to have a distance? Is it 10? Is it 10? Anyone else get 10? I got 10. You got 10? Right on. I believe it is 10. What about the midpoint? Um, negative one, two. Negative one and two. Let me check that one real quick. Let's see. Midpoint. We add these, right? Two, two, one, two, six, two. That's a negative one, you said, right? Yeah. Two. I agree. And then for the distance, we square root this distance. So from negative four to two, that's the distance of six. Squared is 36. And two to six, that's the distance of eight, 64. Square root 100. Very good. So that's a good review from yesterday. So now we're going to get to some more review. Equations and inequalities. You guys should be experts on this. So here's a bunch of properties you don't need to write down. It's just a good review. Um, this is what we use to solve equations. Right? These are all in the textbook. And go ahead and solve this one. So you could talk to each other, either in the chat or just start talking out loud. Just like if we were in class, I'd say talk to a partner. You could talk to a partner.
know. You guys should have an answer. What do you got? Five over two. Five over two. Anybody else? Same thing. Same thing? Mm hmm Same. Same thing. Uh, very good. Five over two. That's too easy for you, huh? Step it, up. Step it up a little bit with fractions. Bam. Well, you guys are still too quiet for my liking. I don't hear anyone talk. That's all right. X equals six. Six? Is it six? Anyone else? Six? I got six. I got six. You got six? I got six. Hey, it is six. Good job. Anyone need to see that one? Can you show how to do it? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. So eight and four are denominators. So a con denominator would be eight. So I would multiply this by eight. Multiply this by eight. Multiply this by eight. So this eight and this eight, they divide out to one, right? Eight divides into eight one time. One times five x minus two is five x minus two. Two times eight. 16, four goes into eight, two times. So then you got two times x, is two x. We can subtract the two x to this side. That leaves us with three x. And then add the two over here. So we get three x is 18. And of course you divide the three you get six. So when you have fractions, multiply by the least common denominator. All right, very good. And just like the other properties, there's also properties for inequalities. They're all exactly the same except for the last one. Can anyone tell me what the last one does? If we're multiplying by a constant that is less than zero, we have to be careful. Don't the sign switch? The sign switched. If you pay attention, that was less than, and now all of a sudden it is greater than, right? So if we multiply or divide by a constant that is negative or less than zero, then we have to reverse the inequality or switch the inequality. If it's positive, we don't. Less than stays less than. So be careful with that. That's the only thing with inequalities. We have to reverse the inequality when dealing with a negative. So with that, you get to practice. And I wanted both inequality and interval. Ready, go. And feel free to talk to each other, help each other.
باينان I think I got it. Yeah, seven over two. I did. I did. Me too. What about for the interval notation? Is it seven over two and then infinity? And what about the brackets or parentheses? Bracket negative seven over two. Coma, positive infinity, and parentheses. There you go. Very good. So it sounds like you got that right. Anyone need us to do that or you're okay? Can you do it, please? Yeah, let's do it. So this would become 3x minus 3. Got to distribute. And then this, uh oh, go back. Close your eyes. There we go. Where's my pen? There's my pen. So then plus 2, less than equal to 5x plus 6. All right, so first thing, distribute to 3. So now we can add these because they're just constants. So we get 3x, and then negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then we can subtract the 5x over here. So 3 subtract 5 is negative 2. And then we're going to add the 1. So we get negative 2x is then equal to seven. So we got to divide by negative two. And we're dividing by negative so that inequality has to reverse, turn around, switch. And we're left with negative seven over two, which is what we got here. And then from yesterday, we learned inequality notation or the day before, I don't remember. So this is what we call unbounded or one-sided. We're starting at this value and numbers have to be greater than that. So if you're having trouble going from this to this, it might help to draw it real quick. Here's zero. Somewhere over here is negative seven over two. And we want x's that are bigger or equal to, so we're starting here and going this way. So you can see we start here. So we're starting at negative seven over two. It's included, so it's a bracket, and we're going all the way to infinity. And infinity always has a parenthesis. Equal to means bracket. We're good? I don't know how to erase that. Erase? There we go. So now I'll go ahead and do this one with the fractions.
And for Ian, you got an answer? Uh, uh, Ephraim. Did, did you say Ephraim? Ephraim? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I What'd okay. you get? I got uh, X is greater than uh, negative two. X is greater than negative two? Yes. Yesenia, what'd you get? I got the same. The same, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. How would we write that in uh, interval notation? Parenthesis negative two comma infinity parenthesis. Very good. And if you need help doing this one, again, we would multiply by the least common denominator. In this case, it would be 12. Where did my pen? So you just multiply by 12, multiply by 12. So 3 goes into 12 four times, so that would become a 4x. 2 goes into 12 six times, so that becomes a 6. 4 divides into 12 three times, so that's 3x. And 3 into 12 is 4. From there, it should be easy to solve. Good. Excellent. And one more. Is it x is less than negative two and one half? X is less than negative two and one half. X is less than negative two and one half. So that's negative five halves, right? Okay, anybody else? Did you say x le is less than negative 5 over 2? Uh, he said negative 2 and a half, but negative 5 over 2 is the same. Right. Okay. Very good. So we got two people that agree. EVA, what'd you get? I'm not finished. You're not finished. <laughs> what? I know it's Friday, but come on now. You should be able to do that. That's not that difficult. Francisco, what you got? Francisco froze. He asleep. He's not moving. Oh, I got um negative two point five x less than negative two point five. Oh, so there it is, another one. You like the decimals, huh? X is less than there, two points. So we got all three representations, but you guys all agree. I haven't heard anything different yet. So let's see. Oh, I didn't put the answer on that one. I'll just say you're right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Let me do it real quick. Maybe five X plus one half, negative, negative two. X minus four. 
that would be uh, maybe ten minutes plus one. Plus one. I agree. So, what about interval notation? Um, parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative five over two parentheses. Good. Excellent. So, it should look like, oh, you can't see that because I'm at the beach. There we go. We oh, yeah. are. So you should have got that. All right, cool. And that's it. So there's your assignment for the weekend. Today's Friday, so that one would be due Wednesday. I don't count Monday as a school day because Mondays are just going to be. Uh, office hours, no lectures on Monday. Good. So any questions, concerns, comments, compliments? <laughs> All right, so like yesterday, I got stuff to grade, so I will leave the room open so you can stay in here and Work on your homework and ask questions and hang out, or you're free to leave, and we will see you on Monday. And don't forget to post the extra credit if you want to teach everyone how to change their name. All right. Sounds good? All right. Enjoy your weekend, or... Thank you. You too. Yep. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. Mr. Garcia, have a nice weekend. Bye, right, thank you. Bye, Vidi. Bye. <laughs>